welcome to The Trade on this Monday morning. Good to have you here with us. Let's just quickly get across some of the headlines out there. And Japan's ruling coalition has lost its parliamentary majority in Sunday's national election, raising uncertainty of the makeup of the next government and, of course, what that will mean for monetary policy. The yen fell to a three-month low. Japanese stocks look to decline today after the prime minister's coalition lost that majority. And China's industrial profits, we learned, plunged in September, recording the steepest monthly decline of the year. This is as policymakers ramp up stimulus to revitalize growth. And oil prices down on Israel's retaliatory strike on Iran over the weekend, bypassing Tehran's oil and nuclear infrastructure, though, so not disrupting energy supplies and easing geopolitical tensions just slightly in the Middle East. But let's turn from the globe now to the charts that matter, and we'll bring it back home with Michael Gable from Fairmont Equities. Hello. Nice Hello. to see you. Thank you. Okay, so this little market that could, the ASX <laughs> 200, is it just going to keep chugging along? Well, so far that seems to seems to be the case. That's that's the trend. You know, the trend is your friend. Yeah. It's um, it is chugging along. It's uh, you know still looking fine. Um, you know, the volatility is quite low. We're just you know, you know, meandering higher, and that's you know that's that's what we want to see. We know that there's apparently risks in the U.S. because because of the election, but you know sometimes when everyone's expecting big volatility, you know, expecting one thing, you know, the opposite occurs. As you know, many people were expecting a lot of weakness in September, October. That didn't eventuate. Um, but yeah, look at the moment. Look, it all could change tomorrow, of course. But for the moment, our market's trading well. I don't see. I don't see any danger signs. We've got a weekly chart up here. Um, yeah, since the start of the year, just just meandering higher. There is a bit of a channel there. We're at, you know, the, the top end of that channel, but uh -huh. we have been so for several weeks now, and we just keep keep edging higher. I mean, if we were to suffer a bit of a setback um, and we go back to the bottom of that channel, we're talking, you know, from about eighty two hundred down to about eight thousand. So, you know, not a yeah, not a big deal. I mm. mean, that would be what two and a half percent downside potentially till you get the next level of support. So, yeah, look, I think you just you sound like a man who's quite calm when you look at that chart. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Do you get excited when you look at gold, or do you think it's looking pretty toppy here? I mean, I know mm. that all the all the fundamental drivers seem to be going in gold's favour still. Yeah, that's right. So this is a this is a daily chart of gold starting from around March, which is when we had that. You know the commencement of this this current move. That's when we had the breakout um, above the long-term resistance line. Still, just trading pretty well. So what I'm looking at here is, you know, the moves up. You know, when gold goes higher, it does it you know, quite quickly and convincingly. But when it cools off, we're not seeing any steep decline. So as we could see over the past few days, um, gold's just moved sideways to consolidate that move. So again, it's stepping up quite nicely. The only negative is that you know more people are, are talking talking up gold and being bullish but talking three thousand dollars for gold yeah look all these all these big big targets so um but look i, I don't see i don't see a sort of euphoric situation um <coughs> yeah just yeah just doing doing quite well so ultimately nothing to be too concerned about any dips I think are a buying opportunity for gold stocks. Okay what's happening with the US dollar in your view because it's had consecutive weeks of gains. Mm. Yeah fantastic run of run of gains and I think it's interesting to look at the US dollar because it does impact what commodities do um, including gold. Um, you've generally got an inverse relationship so as the US dollar heads higher that tends to put commodities under pressure yeah. and vice versa. Um, as we could see, this is a weekly chart on the far right hand side. Yeah, we've had about four weeks of solid gains in the US dollar. Doesn't seem to have stopped gold, of course. That just shows its underlying strength. But what we have seen in the past four weeks is a cooling off in some of our local commodity stocks, whether it's you know, BHP, Fortescue, mm -hmm. et cetera. They've cooled off a bit as the US dollar has head, um, headed higher. But of course, you know, these, these sorts of moves where I think at the start of this month, the US dollar's been up every day except maybe yeah. three of them. Um, you know, that won't last. And the reason why is we could see, I've drawn some, some blue lines there to show um, some major resistance coming up. So up until the breakdown in gold, uh, sorry, the breakdown in the US dollar 
a um, couple of months ago, it was trading sideways in a tightening range. It broke down, I think that was around early July. It has come back up recently, but it is now starting to test the underneath of that blue line. So what that means is if we do see selling commence yeah. again in the US dollar and it heads south, that'll be a positive. It'll be a tailwind, not only for gold, but for the likes of BHP and Fortescue and so on. So for our you know, viewers out there you know, watching some of these declines um, in commodity stocks, get ready because um, there's a good chance they're about to head higher again. Oh, okay. That sounds intriguing. What about outside of commodities? Do you see any real potential for particular names here in Australia based on the charts? Yep. Yeah, so look, I brought a few charts of other stocks outside of commodities. Um, you know, the big story several weeks ago was um, sell your banks and buy yeah. commodities. Yeah. And, it, and we did initially you know, mention that, um, but you know, these things don't, don't last forever. I don't think it's an either or market at the moment. So the banks, they've had their cooling off. We've bought back into, um, we've topped up banks a few weeks ago, a month what ago. Banks, um, we were picking up. We were picking up CBA, and we'll have a chart of that shortly. But, but this is ANZ, and as we can see, it's just back up to the the recent high. Um, but what so, would make it go through that resistance level? So generally, a bullish market will will see it see it push higher. Perhaps yeah, we've got some more more data coming out in terms of CPI, etc. Um, but what's interesting with this chart is we don't necessarily need to be scared because ANZ is at an old high. What I've noticed here by drawing that line is it has tested this level on a number of occasions. And actually what happens is the more you test the level, the more you weaken it. So okay. we don't have an upside break yet. Um, we don't need to preempt it, but just keep an eye on ANZ. If it bursts through that blue line, you're going to see it um, continue to, to rally high for a bit longer. Okay. And so you said that you've been buying CBA. Let's find out why. Yep. And CBA, very similar oh. chart. So we could see that after that initial sell-off, you know, the narrative was was sell banks by by resources. I mean, that wasn't going to last forever. So, you know, CBA is back up at its old highs, again, knocking on the door of, of all-time highs. So one to keep an eye on. I'm still happy to hold it here, but if you get a break above that blue line, it'll start its, you know, the next phase of the rally. So, yeah, it's not as simple as selling your banks here. It looks like they can head higher. What about tech, though? I mean, where do you... And how do you view growth names right now? Too expensive? No, look, I think um, you know tech stocks still have still have further to run locally. There's been a lot of attention in the last week on Wise Tech, but you know the other big name which yeah. has been doing really well is is Zero. And um, what I've noticed with this particular name is it has been trending higher for about a year now. We could see it, we could see that diagonal blue line, but ever since it posted a sort of an intraday high for the year in September. Um, it's just been trading sideways to bring it back towards that diagonal blue line. So to me, zero looks like it's getting ready to um, continue its run higher. So I think that looks like a buying opportunity here. All right. Um, Michael, it's always a pleasure to have you in. Thank, thank you. you for running us through the charts. No worries. Appreciate thank it. You. Michael Gable from Fairmont Equities, and that is the trade for today.